Hey, welcome to the Rock Life Podcast. Stay tuned today. If you've ever wondered the difference between the way God judges things versus the way man judges things, you're going to want to stay tuned. We have been in a series here at the Rock Church and World Outreach Center. I want to encourage you. We just finished a three-part series on that, that subject exactly, the difference between God's judgment versus man. There is a huge difference because we are imperfect. Our God is not. Uh, my name is Antonio. Welcome. I'm here with Pastor Dan. Hey, everybody. Good morning, Pastor Dan. Good morning. Uh, Rock Life Podcasters, we are just so grateful for you. I want to encourage you to like, share. We are now across all the platforms, or the main platforms, I should say, and uh, we're hearing some great feedback, and so we do appreciate you, don't we, Pastor Dan? Absolutely, and I'd um, say this. I know we're saying good morning, but yeah. good evening, oh, good right. afternoon, uh, um, good middle of the night for yeah. our overnight Happy graveyard. summer, happy winter, happy... Happy life. Autumn, yeah, all yeah. of it. I mean, who knows? The, the internet stuff stays it's on. It's amazing, yeah. amazing what, what gets where and when it gets there. Well, our prayer is that whenever you're listening to this, wherever you're listening to this, this is a blessing to you. It edifies you. And it is a supplemental uh, teaching, conversation, things that we don't always get to say or talk about. Obviously, there's not two people on the stage on a weekend. No. Um, and so I, I always consider it a privilege to be able to ask some of these questions and pull some of this stuff out. And right. And I think the neat thing is, is that, you know, I, I think one way and there's tons of different thought processes and, and perspectives. Yeah. And I, I'm always refreshed by your perspective because you ask questions and you're very inquisitive. And so sometimes when you bring questions to me, I'm like, huh, I, I never thought of that, you know, and, and but it's yeah. good because it, it pushes me to think and uh, and to get into new realms. And so, yeah. you know, even with the, the subject like God's judgment versus man's judgment, you know, today we're going to look at some common questions and maybe yeah. some of the, the thoughts that rose up from that mm -hmm. and uh, and some neat things. But, um, you know, people might actually be looking at judgment uh, with current events. Yeah. You know, there's a war currently as we record uh, this yeah. going on in Israel. Yeah. It's almost been a year since the October 7th wow. attack on Israel. Yeah. Yep. Uh, it's Rosh Hashanah mm -hmm. currently, and yeah. that's been a time where when the Jews are doing their festivals, uh, that outside enemies try to attack them because they know that they're vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And um, really, this is like the Day of Atonement. And so a lot of people are looking at prophetic calendars. They're looking at what's going on around. Right. Um, you know, we've seen some things in our land with uh, devastation, catastrophe. Yeah. Uh, my wife was just telling me, though, <laughs> she said that someone was saying, you know, oh, it's things are getting so much worse and there's so yeah. much more and it's hotter and this yeah. and that. And some guy was like, no. You just need to go back and look at the almanac and just, right. you know, yeah. kind of compare it and realize it's it's been like this. Just we haven't had the Internet and yeah. social media to tell us about it. That's right. Um, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, I'm sure there's a million opinions out there about that. But the neat thing is in the midst of everything that we're seeing globally and mm -hmm. even nationally yeah. uh, and locally, um, there's some amazing things going on. Mm -hmm. You know, last night, um, Pastor Jess and I, after church, went to... Our daughter's college campus. Yeah, I mean, you guys jetted off. We we were out. Service yeah, is done. And, uh, we were waving at everybody as we <laughs> ran out the door. But um, but yeah, we wanted to get down there. They have a chapel service yeah. because it's a college campus right. that starts at nine thirty at wow. night and goes till ten thirty. People were there. People showed up. It was packed. Well, kind of uh, like an homage back to young adults, right? You guys used yeah. to start at nine, but we won't go there. Yet. <laughs> well, we started at nine because right. we went yeah. to. We were in a college town, yeah. and uh, we went to a church service that had a Wednesday night, and then afterwards they had their college service, and it was packed with college yeah. students, and so we got nine the vision. Yeah. To do that at the at the church and uh, and started that and eventually it snuck its way back to eight yeah. and yeah, as we had kids and yeah. stuff like that and then seven o'clock when I headed it over it was, seven's good seven's good yeah let's do that so and I'm grateful it's yeah good. seven is good <laughs> that's awesome but no it was really neat to see and and uh, my daughter actually spoke at the chapel she gave right. like a ten minute exhortation awesome yeah talking about Mary and Martha and how Mary sat at the feet of Jesus yeah. and chose the needful thing and talked about how in the Psalms there's that word selah, pause, mm -hmm. and reflect in God's presence, and yeah. just gave the the students an opportunity. And I tell you, man, both my wife and I were in tears. The presence of God was in the place. So cool. There was a girl to my left, lying prostrate on the floor, face down, weeping. Wow. And I'm just like, man. And, and then they got into some other songs afterwards, and um, people were jumping up and down. I mean, people were pacing the aisles. It was it was like yeah. just awesome to see what God is doing mm -hmm. on the college campus. Now, not everybody was yeah. is saved even on a college campus, right. you know, a Christian college campus. But um, you know, they have they have a requirement of chapel, so mm -hmm. they're there in the presence of God, and and I believe that God is moving in this mm -hmm. generation, yeah. you know, and doing Absolutely. some amazing things. Well, so I mean, like you mentioned, it is a it a Christian university, uh, but that doesn't that doesn't demean that at all because exactly they're not. 
checking your the track of your discipleship yeah. at the door before admittance. And it is also a testament of what we are seeing uh, across other college campuses as well. I know, again, like you said, with the news that we see, uh, it almost seems like the world media would like us to believe that things are awful and horrible. Uh, but we are seeing some really cool things yeah. on the earth uh, and in our country on some of these major college campuses with uh, influential in the country where there's big football towns and things like this. I know Ohio State had these huge where the, the football players, I mean, this is a, na a nationally ranked uh, football team and the uh, the football players are showing up and they're hosting yeah the revival it's services awesome. and baptizing students love and it texas a&m and uh, some really cool things are happening and there is a hunger in the yeah, generation for sure i i just heard about another one i think it was in arkansas or alabama i right. always get the two confused yeah but, um yeah down south there was another college campus had yeah. like 13 to 1500 students it just in revival mm -hmm. and some great things are happening you know in the midst of the darkness, we're called to shine as lights. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I mentioned Israel, and Israel's really the time clock. You know, right. God's eye is, is always on Jerusalem. He said mm -hmm. that he would, he would be looking there. He's placed his name there. And, uh, and definitely, in the end times, the Jews have a huge part to play. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we're talking about that day that's coming, that day, you know, the day of judgment, the day of wrath, right. those sorts of things. And we talked about God's judgment through this series. And, and in this part number three, we really did dive deep into the finality mm -hmm. of God's judgment and judgment day. And that's why it's so important that we warn men. Yeah. That's why it's so important that we witness. That's why it's so important that we continue to keep ourselves for that day. Yeah. Um, because there is going to be a judgment and the sheep and the goats will be separated. Some mm -hmm. people who think that they're saved are going to find out that they're not. Right. Uh, that's a sad truth. Mm hmm. Um, but then, uh, you know, the believers are going to go to a second judgment. Yeah. Um, and the believers judgment where we go before Christ and our works go before him. Right. And we're judged according, not to, not according to our sin. That's been judged on Jesus on the cross. Right. We've so been cleared. Let's pause for a sec. Sure. Um, so there's the judgment of basically saved, unsaved. Right. Sheep then it's goats. like, okay, here you go. You are saved. You, you will spend eternity in heaven forever right enter into the joy of your lord and then now we're going into and i, I know you touched about this each week i feel like you touched on this a little Tried bit to, yeah uh, you made the distinction i know we're covering today the the past couple the last two weeks of this series uh which i think is it's great to do them in one podcast because they so uh well fit together in a right. conversation yes um but now here we are at the second judgment the belief like and you did say the also known as the believer's judgment right, yeah and this is where uh, and, I, and I like the way you said it. Just because you're saved doesn't mean you get to get away with bad behavior. Right. We're still God's children. Right. God's going to discipline his children. He does that now. That's right. the neat thing about uh, having the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Hebrews talks about the chastening of God, that every father who loves their children disciplines them for right. their good. We're, we're being refined. We're being disciplined. Um, but, uh, you know, as far as when we go before the judgment seat, what we did in the body, we will be judged for our works. Mm -hmm. And um, the Apostle Paul talks about this in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, after talking about being spiritual and unspiritual, that, yeah. that they should be spiritually minded, but they're very carnally minded. Right. Um, they had a lot of problems in that church, you know, and, and they were getting drunk at the Lord's Supper. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't know what to do with as far as it came to, should I let my daughter marry or not right. marry? Um, hey, so-and-so wants to dress this way, so I wants to dress that way. Should a man look like a woman? You right. know, I mean, they had some, some, yeah. some concerns and questions. And so within that, the Apostle Paul says, you guys are very naturally earthly, fleshly minded. And mm -hmm. he calls it carnally minded. Yeah, right. And, uh, and, and so from that understanding of, of the mind frame, he goes into how we build our life. Mm -hmm. And he talks about our life as a house. Sounds like a movie title, doesn't it? I think yeah. it is somewhere in yeah, there. Yeah, I know? do. And I remember liking that movie. Did you? Yeah. I, I don't know that I've ever seen Life it. Life as so. a house, yeah. I, I don't know if I can recommend it or not on this podcast. Yeah, maybe I'd, I... It's been a long time. I yeah, know. so check it out on Plugged <laughs> In first. There you go. That's a good one, but... um. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, um, yeah, I mean, he, he, he likens our life to a house and, and how we build. And he says that the materials matter. You can build with gold, silver, and precious stones, or wood, hay, and stubble. Mm -hmm. And both of them will build a house. I mean, you can b see houses built out of grass and right. bamboo and, yeah. you know, palm tree leaves. But if you throw fire on that, it's going to light up. Right. It's very incendiary. Yep. With gold, silver, and precious stones, you hit those things with fire, they're going to pass through. Mm -hmm. They're going to stand the test. And so that's what the Apostle Paul says, is that at the end of our lives, when we go before the Lord for his judgment on our lives, mm -hmm. 
sin has already been dealt with. That's that's right. out of the way. We're not being judged according to our sin. Right. Jesus is our Passover lamb. So the judgment for sin has passed over us, mm-hmm. right? We're not going to be judged according to that. If we've got the blood of the lamb applied to our lives, he who has the son has life. We realize that. There was a parable that Jesus talked about where everyone got the same reward. Yep. And that was uh, the parable of the minas, if you will, or, or some of the uh, translations called the parable of the pounds. Everybody gets the same rewards. I believe that's speaking of mm-hmm. believers receiving our salvation. Yeah, Everybody yeah. gets that same reward of salvation. But then there's another parable called the parable of the talents. And in the parable of the talents, there are differing rewards based on activity. Yeah. Works, right? One guy receives five. He gains five more. He, he gets... A, yeah. a, a big reward, right? Yeah. Another guy has three delivered to him. He, he gains three more, right? Mm-hmm. So he, he's, he's gotten a differing reward. Yeah. The, the one who has no return, they take it from him and they give it to the guy that produced the most. Right. Yeah. And, and I think that's basic investment strategy, right? You know, yeah. if, if you've got three different investment accounts and one of them doesn't produce, right. well, this one's producing really high. I'm just going to put it in the yeah. one that's producing high. That's right. really what the story's saying. Yeah. However, if you notice, the rewards differ in the parable of the talents. It's not the same reward across the board. Right. It's differing rewards. Mm-hmm. I believe that speaks to the believer's judgment, mm-hmm. that as our works are passed before the Lord, so whatever life you've built, yeah. that house, right. will be set up, and the fire of God's going to hit it and test it. Right. A- and that testing will show whether or not it was gold, silver, and precious stones, or wood, hay, and stubble. Right. Now, the things that remain are a reward. You get to keep those things. Yeah. The things that are lost, obviously, you don't get to keep. Right. And, and so that's where I, I mentioned that there will be weeping in heaven. God yeah. will wipe away every tear because he's gracious and he's good. Um, but but there's going to be some losses that we suffer in heaven. Yeah. And e- even sadness, you know, yeah. which people speak of heaven as eternal bliss. Yeah. We have to realize that God has all the emotions, and therefore, yes. we have all the emotions. Right. E- even in eternity. Yeah. And, and that, that may be a new thought that people think, because with the absence of sin, mm-hmm. why would we ever be sad? Yeah, right, right, right. Interesting thoughts. No, that is, that's that's good. What would cause that? Yeah. Right. So it's important how we build our lives, and I think that's where people uh, really need to have the takeaway of God's judgment as a believer, yeah. right? We're watching ourselves to make sure that we don't drift away, mm-hmm. um, because if you if you sear your conscience long enough... yeah. And if you willfully reject God and his ways and his sacrifice, eventually you're going to trample the Son of God underfoot, like the book of Hebrews says, yep. and walk away into apostasy where you reject the sacrifice of right. Jesus. Yeah. And that's where Hebrews says that the, the ground that produces only thorns and thistles is in danger of being cursed right. and being burned with fire. Right? That, that speaks of, of apostasy. That speaks of willfully rejecting the right. sacrifice of Jesus. And this speaks to believers. Sometimes people say, well, you can't lose your salvation. No, you can't lose it, right. but you can reject it and walk well, away from I, it. I, that's, that's where it naturally was going. I was going to uh, bring that up because I know that, that that's a common question, and right. I know that you, you, very made, you made that very clear in that statement. It's not a matter of I'm doing something to lose it. I remember in, in Bible college, one of our teachers Said it's not like you you didn't do anything to find it, so you can't lose it that way. Right. But basically, like you said, you set it down, you walk away from it, you take this gift, mm-hmm. and you either trample over it or you say, "Nah," and I'm by, by my choices, by my own preferences, I'm kind of right. I'm I'm rejecting this truth. Right? right. Everyone wants to talk about their truth. Well, you went and w- did your own truth as opposed to the versus the truth. Yes. Uh, yes. And so you rejected this free gift of salvation. It was not lost as if it was stripped from you, mm-hmm. right? As much as you, you yeah. let it go. Jesus said, no one can snatch them from my right, hand. Right. But I did hear one person say, but you can walk through the hole in his hand. Right. Right. right? Uh, he has these scars. And right. so no one can snatch you. The devil can't snatch you. Mm-hmm. Sin can't snatch right. you. You know, other people can't snatch you from his hand. It, as a believer, if you <coughs> sin, you're not right. lost. You're right. not damned to hell. Right. Uh, as a believer, if you sin, repent. Your yeah. sin's been covered by the blood. That doesn't give you an excuse to continue in sin. Right. But uh, repent, turn from right. it, and come back to God, and and then work on it. Mm-hmm. Right? We mm-hmm. we we work out our salvation with fear and right. trembling. We the 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 term is out. Yes. Right. It, that salvation that's in you should be coming out of mm-hmm. you. We're working that out. It's it's not works based salvation. It's salvation by faith. Yeah. In the grace of God, that right. that God saves us through faith. Right. Mm-hmm. That's the avenue of grace getting a hold of our lives and pulling us out of sin and out of hell. But we work out that salvation. We, we do the good works because we're saved. 
And that's the expression of a life that doesn't willfully reject yeah. the witness of the Spirit, which is the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit or the unpardonable sin, right? right? That, that's where the, the religious leaders of that day saw the works of Jesus and the witness of the Holy Spirit, and they rejected it and attributed it to Satan. Right. That's the unpardonable sin, when you are willfully rejecting the witness of the Holy Spirit of Jesus and His righteousness. Right. So if you're not doing that, you're not committing the unpardonable sin because, you know, you messed up. You, right. you had too much alcohol yeah. and you got drunk yeah. or you jumped in bed with somebody uh, on a one-night well, stand. Having, and <clears throat> excuse me. Having doubts about your faith. Doubts right? so about your faith, This is kind of yeah. where people are, are at. They walk, you know, something, a tragedy happens. Not like, well, Where's are God? you good, God? What yeah. is this that I've heard? And that wrestling, and then they, they find themselves in this, like, oh, I doubted God, it, so I'm done anyway, so I might as well just walk away. Which, which people don't understand. <clears throat> Repentance is such a gift, you know, right. and the Bible says that God grants it to us. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where we have to understand that if you find yourself in that place of being drunk and, or in a one-night stand or having those doubts mm-hmm. or, or, you know, you, you, you gave in in a moment of weakness and you cheated on your taxes right. or, you know, yeah. whatever it is. You, you let a word slip out, you right. know, from high school or something right. like that. And, and, and you realize, oh, gosh, I did the wrong thing. Mm-hmm. You know, that's where repentance gives us the pathway back to connection with right. God. Yeah. That's where the cleansing comes in from that sin. Now, in eternity, you won't be judged for the sin. Right. That sin has already been judged on right. Jesus on the cross. Right. The penalty has been paid for, and so you don't have to pay the price for the sin. Mm-hmm. However, for the work, there's going to be a loss. Right. And I think that's where people need to understand the difference, mm-hmm. is that that gold, silver, and precious stones yeah. actually has a, a representation in the Word of God. Right. right? Scripture interp- scri- interprets Scripture. Right. So when you look through the Word of God, like First Peter talks about your faith is as precious as gold, yeah. refined in the fire, right? Mm-hmm. So when we believe God without doubting, yeah. that's the gold. Amen. When we doubt God, yeah. that's the wood, hay, and stubble. Right. Now, it'll be burned up. There's a yeah. loss there. Right. But if we believe God, hey, guess yeah. what? We put gold there, mm-hmm. Right. Uh, even if we if we if we you know struggle along the way, but we we end in faith. That's a, the beauty of the story of Abraham, right? Yes. Here's Abraham yeah. and Sarah both laughed at yeah. the promises of God, right? Yeah. And yet, what does Hebrews record? He didn't waver in faith. Right. I right. love that. Yeah. <laughs> faith covered that right. that loss, yeah. right? There was yep. gold in place of that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there was some moments of of weakness in in Abraham's life, but faith mm-hmm. covers that that portion, right. and that's what history will remember. That I think that's the thing, beauty about God and about His redemptive plan for our life is that even if we doubt, even if we have those moments of weakness, um, silver, right? If you look at the Proverbs, like apples of gold and settings of silver mm-hmm. uh, is an aptly spoken word. Uh, the tongue of the righteous is like choice silver. Mm-hmm. Oftentimes our tongues, if you've ever heard of someone being silver-tongued, yeah, most yeah, of the time right. that's like a put-down, yeah, yeah. I think. <laughs> like they're sly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I would say forked tongue is right. probably <laughs> worse, you know, <laughs> it's speaking out of both sides of your mouth right, or something right. like that. But, but a silver tongue usually mm-hmm. speaks of eloquence. Right. And it speaks of being able to put together thoughts and words mm. and, and that sort of a thing. But but when the Bible speaks about uh, having a silver tongue, it's right. speaking about righteous words. Mm. Right. What we speak matters. Yeah. Uh, it is important for us to say the right things. It mm. is important for us to speak faith. Right. It is important for us to speak life, to mm. not speak criticism and condemnation. You know, mm. parents, if, if you're listening to this or, you know, uh, people that are around children, what you say is a seed that's going to be planted into that heart of that child that will produce. And so we have to speak with that silver tongue, right? Plant the silver seed of faith and and believe God, and you're going to see your kids grow. You know, when they mess up and do something that's stupid, because they will, right? We did too. We understand that. (laughs) Absolutely. And uh, But instead of telling them that they're stupid and that they're never going to amount to anything, speak life into them. Hey, I know you can do better. You, You have the Spirit of God. You're able to do this. Uh, you're a good kid. Mm-hmm. Not, oh, you're such a bad kid. Right. No, you're a good kid. Mm-hmm. And, and you're going to do better in the future. I love you, and let's do this together. And, uh, discipline, yeah, for sure. Take away the phone, the electronics, right. the yeah. privileges, whatever that is. Uh, appropriate spanking for, for the little ones, you know, not abuse or beating or anything like right. that, but appropriate, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and that way they understand that there's a penalty. And, and then they don't repeat it. But they also know that there's love and reinforcing that, and and those silver words that are coming through, those things will right. will pass the test of time, right? right. Uh, whereas worry, doubt, fear, uh, you know, Jesus even said every idle word we speak will be right. brought before the judgment. Yeah, right, burned up. Right, I believe because yep. you know it may not be a sinful word; it might just be an idle word, like mm-hmm. or just yakking. Yeah, that's not going to remain. Yeah, but when we speak faith, when we speak life, those things are going to remain. Um, precious stones. 
Yeah. You know what the, this and, one is? The, no, like in the uh, in the analogy. Like, here? like in the analogy, right, yeah. Right. So again, inter- scripture right. interpret scripture. Right. Okay, the New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven in the book of Revelation is lined with stones. Oh, yes. Right? Yeah. Uh, Peter said that we as living stones are being built together in a spiritual house. Oh, wow. Yeah. For God, I believe. And even the Apostle Paul said, you are our crown. Mm. Yeah. Stones, gems, yeah. right? Yeah. So I believe that that precious stones is people. Wow. The people that we bring into the kingdom for wow. eternity wow. are going to pass the test. Yeah. The people that we lose, there's going to be losses. And the Bible says in the book of Revelation that the burning mm-hmm. from hell mm-hmm. goes up ever in front of the people. There's going to be tears in heaven when we right. realize who's not there. Right. And that's a sad thought. Yeah. Thank God he wipes away every tear from our eyes. Yeah. But I believe that that's a part of the sadness of heaven that that we will experience, that God experiences. Right. Right? God is perfect, and there's a perfect sadness for the loss Mm -hmm. of people who rejected Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so anyone that we can bring into the kingdom is is a precious stone. Amen. Right? Oh, yeah. And and they're being built into that spiritual house. We are going to house the presence Mm -hmm. of God. We are the new Jerusalem. Yeah. Coming down out of heaven onto the new earth. Which is what, like, and again, just going back to, I, and I know I'm speaking from perspective of conversations I've had, and and even as the Holy Spirit is speaking to me under under this series and the teaching, is okay. What's what is my what's my takeaway? What am I? Because mm-hmm. uh, like, because I'm not gonna sit. I'm not in fear of my salvation. Yeah. Right. That's, yeah. I'm, I'm, and and you made that clear each week, uh, but the caution, I and I think you said it earlier in this conversation. I I I love it because it's like the caution of these losses and then the victories in that. Yeah. The caution of, Oh, I, I, in other words, I'm not going to turn you off pastor Dan because, Oh, I'm saved. Why, why are we talking about judgment? I know a lot of churches, a lot of, you know, like, well, why are we, why I'm saved. Right. Yeah. There but is the, no the caution in, and I love it. Like it's like, if you ever think it couldn't be you, sure. I feel like you think, I, I, I think of the parable of the guy at the, at the wall praying and say, I just thank God I'm not that guy. Oof. Right? Man, yeah. It can. I, I'm in church three times a week. Mm-hmm. This guy, probably, this is his first time in a month, and he smells like alcohol. Mm-hmm. But I'm here all the time, and I know the words to the song, and I sing. It couldn't be me. And I, that posture of like, and I like, when, when you say that, like, it, it absolutely could be you. Right? Yeah. And I was just having this conversation. We're, we're a mistake away from starting, you know, potentially going in a, whirlwind finding ourselves super broken right Right. and so i have to be cautionary of my actions right because um while again i don't lose my salvation Mm -hmm. i could find myself in a series of mistakes that puts me in a place where now i'm at risk of walking away and blaming everyone around me Mm -hmm. and again i'm not trying to be doom and gloom there but that that's how i that's how i posture myself in this in in this series and learning about what we're talking about here in my judgments, because God's judgment is final it because is. God's judgment is impartial. It, uh, it doesn't just get to go. I was raised in church. I'm on staff at a church or all these different things that we would kind of position ourselves as to yeah, be self-righteous even. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because that's the other side of, of, of these things. And I, and I realize that because that's how I, like you said, the perspective I hear is sometimes the vacuum that I can be in as the, 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 longer i'm on staff at a church the more i realize like oh i, I have to really talk to non-church people to yeah help my perspective otherwise i'm just like what do you mean you don't go to church all the time what do you mean that you don't understand this right um but because there are people on main street so to speak having some of these struggles and realizing like oh man that's why this is really important that yeah. we cover these topics absolutely and you're, you're foreshadowing uh the next series that we're going to go into on attitudes and actions yeah uh, where it talks to the religious mm-hmm. and we find out about, you know, really the distinction that's made because people uh, in that religious mindset uh, depart themselves from any sort of, uh, you know, responsibility in some of these areas. And that's where the Apostle Paul said to test yourself, mm-hmm. you know, to check yourself out, make sure that you're in the faith, mm-hmm. um, you know, watch lest Love you it. fall. Right. You know, there, there, there are sufficient warnings in the Bible that we all need to understand, like, hey, the, the emphasis of our life is not fear of judgment, fear of failure or loss. 
the, the emphasis of our life is obviously faith, mm -hmm. but we still need to heed the warnings and we still need to watch and be careful. Yeah. It's like I any journey, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus said the way to life is narrow and there are few who find it, right? And right. difficult to, to yeah. travel. It's a, it's a small, thin road, yeah. you know, and um, I've done hiking up in, in the mountains. You've done hiking mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and you know, when you go on those ridges, man, yeah. sometimes there's hundred foot. Yeah several oh, yeah. hundred foot drops yeah. on both sides yeah. and you have to stay in this little two, three foot yeah. path yeah. and you have to watch your footing. Yeah. Now, the emphasis of it is the journey, right? The yeah. destination, where Absolutely. we're going and, and traveling and moving forward. But in, in the journey, you're making sure you don't go to the right or the left because mm -hmm. that's perilous yeah. and, and that would cause you harm. And, yeah. and it's the same thing with our journey with God that as a Christian, giving our heart and life to Jesus, he brings us to this wide open space, but then he calls us up. Yep. And that path is narrow. Mm -hmm. And and there are a few who find it, the Bible says, we have to watch for the path and stay on the path and, and be careful of those pitfalls and those things that, that we encounter along the way. And I believe that's where sin and temptation and those things that we encounter through life are those pitfalls. Yeah. Those are those things that God tells us to watch out for. And that there will, not just in eternity, yeah. like you mentioned, there's losses now. Mm -hmm. I mean, how, how much time do we so waste? Good. How much right. sorrow do we encounter? Right. How, how much guilt and pain and all that kind of stuff are we going through simply because we're not watching, we're not yeah. staying in those, those areas and keeping ourselves? Right. Well, Pastor, you know, we finished out this series. You mentioned, you kind of uh, hinted at the next series. Mm -hmm. um, what, are, how, how do you feel? And I don't know if I've ever asked, how, how do you feel about this series? Do you feel Man. in terms of, yeah, how it, it's del it's how how you were able to deliver it. Obviously, you have you're you're taking a big concept, delivering to people. Yeah. Maybe some feedback that you got from people. Oh, I've had some great feedback. Um, you know, people have shared with me that they've really learned some things. Yeah. and uh, and been able to, um, you know, appropriately put themselves in a position. Yeah. Of number one, their judgment lining up with God's judgment. Right. Um, it. Uh, I had people tell me that they were freed in some mm -hmm. areas. Yep. Um, you know, when it comes to judgments, uh, not only conviction, you know, it's because some people yeah. were judging, you know, yes. it was like, no, I'm being, that was great. I'm being judgmental. You know, yeah. part number one, a lot of people, I, I'm being judgmental. I need to stop. Right. Well, you said Tupac and you lo lost half of us. Oh, like, wait, wait, what? Whoa. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> yeah. Only God. Can I know. Judge me. <laughs> but um, but yeah, no, uh, that that part one, a lot of people was it was I'm improperly judging. But some yeah. did come back and say, hey, you know, the fact that you said that we can judge according to truth right. as God's spiritual people and judge according to God's word. That freed me because mm -hmm. people have told me you can't judge. And I'm like, but it's wrong. Right. You know, like, right. what do I do with that? Yeah. And the neat thing is, is that um, people understood the difference. Mm -hmm. And for a pastor, when someone gets it, that's like our joy. For sure. You know Absolutely. what I mean? It's like, yeah. there's nothing better than that when someone gets it. And so, um, but as well, I, I believe with the eternal perspective, a lot of people really got some clarity, yes. you know, where there might have been some, well, wait, what yeah. are we talking about? No, it's good. And even the fear, you mm -hmm. know, because um, judgment can be a fearful thing. Mm -hmm. and, and especially, like I said, we need to heed the warnings. Right. We need to watch. It's yes. a fearful thing to fall into right. the hands of a living God. Our God is a consuming fire. Right. We understand those statements and we take them with the severity that they come with through the word. But knowing the terror right. of the Lord, we compel men. Yeah. And that's where I think a renewed passion probably got put into people. And so I feel great about the series. Yeah, um, if I great. if I didn't feel like we wrapped it up, yeah. I'd be doing another part. But I feel mm, like yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's complete. It's yeah. it's it's whole. Yeah. And it was a good understanding. And now we can move forward in Romans. And, and if you notice, these three series yeah. that we're in the midst yeah. of these three three parters i don't yeah. know uh, we may go longer in attitudes and okay. actions or we may All go right. shorter i'm not sure um i haven't laid that out yet okay. in my studies i'll yeah. probably do that today tomorrow yeah. <laughs> um but uh but yeah i mean as we go through that we'll see how far that goes but mm -hmm. these three series together compile this whole understanding of the wrath of god being yeah. revealed against all ungodliness but moralists don't think that you're exempt just because you're a good person and yeah. hey religious Come on, you yeah. know, like they, yeah. I think there's just some really neat tie-ins between these three that we're really going to get that full understanding so that when we hit mm -hmm. chapter three and the real significance of Jesus being our mercy seat, our yeah. propitiation, yeah. those are big yeah. theological words. Yeah. But when we hit that, we're really going to realize the significance of it, yeah. you know, and, and the Apostle Paul was brilliant, uh, obviously being led by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm to lay this understanding out in a way that it takes us to that, yeah, you know, that amazing crescendo of, to reach the climax of what, what we're right. talking about, Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. And then we hit faith in Romans 4, and I mean, just... Yeah. 
Well, it's it's been very good, Pastor. And and we saw even this past weekend, uh, the the fruit in terms of the response of from from our believers, from people who are just leaning in, getting plugged in. Yeah. But also from those who are hearing about this judgment, who are hearing about a life of sin and what what is it lies ahead for them and a response in salvation people yeah. coming to the altar it was a beautiful weekend uh, i want to encourage everybody again listening watching uh if you're listening to this but maybe you didn't catch up on the series uh make sure you're listening to part one two and three uh right from the from the rock church podcast and uh man it will be a blessing to you and then share with somebody i know you'll yeah. be blessed and a great takeaway too is as we've been talking bring someone to church yes you know uh we compel men because yep. we know about the eternal judgment that's right. final we yeah. don't want people to go to hell i don't want to be thinking about someone that i loved yeah when i see that pillar of smoke yep you know and and have those tears right um i i want to see that precious stone being built into that spiritual house and because we love people yeah because god loves people yeah. right and even the unlovable even the people that we don't like we can still love them and compel yeah. them and, and give them Jesus. And who knows, you know, they, they may get saved and become a best friend because yeah. God makes them new. Well, when I think about how we, we've always taught in terms of attributed to your account. Yeah. Remember, we've had that teaching uh -huh. and you know, we were just talking about how people are these precious stones. Yes. You know, your invitation, your support of them getting into the house of God, your invitation and them putting their faith in Jesus could be precious stones in your crown. And, and yeah. it's not just the, the pastor, the preacher, whoever it's leads everyone. them in the sinner's prayer, so to speak. It's it's everyone that took part yeah. in seeing someone walk into salvation. Which One really plants, cool. another waters, Amen. but God gave the increase. Yeah. And we the, the sower and the reaper will rejoice together, the Bible right. says. So I, that's amazing. Well, it's been great, Pastor Dan. Thank you for your time. Thank you all for listening all the way through. Again, subscribe, like, share. Man, we love you guys and uh, talk to you guys soon.